Now, after hearing about the considerations that investors do when looking at new business opportunities, it is time to meet one of the innovators themselves. What are the main challenges a startup faces and how do you scale up, struggling your way through the valley of death? Knut Johansson, he is a serial entrepreneur with 25 years of experience from the energy industry. He has, amongst others, invented or co-invented the world's first market-based IT systems for power exchanges and trading systems. Now he is the CEO of eSmart Systems, actually one of the companies that has received support from Equinor Ventures. And their product is software that through artificial intelligence monitors power lines. Now, Knut, he claims that starting things, that's relatively easy. Growing and scaling up, however, is much more challenging. So how to survive, to flourish and succeed? What are the typical errors to avoid? I believe Knut is going to give us some hints on that. And if you have questions for him, just continue to ask him questions through Slido as you're doing so well already. The uh, code is still ET Innovation. And with that, I'm going to leave the screen to Knut Johansson. Thank you so much for um, the invitation to the webinar today and for uh, the opportunity to share some experiences about new technology and innovation with you. Uh, my name is Knut Johansson, uh, uh, CEO of Smart Systems and, uh, and the founder of the company. What I would like to talk about today is, um, is a quick intro to eSmart Systems and then uh, how we transform workflows by using uh, AI-based technology. Uh, and uh, also a little bit about um, the product development uh, we focus on, uh, the market technology adaptions and uh, minimum viable business product, uh, and also the beachhead market approach we, ha we have. And finally, a conclusion. Um, what we, the, the three circles you see here is the way we, we focus when we develop uh, AI products in eSmart. First of all, we, we, we ensure that we have enough uh, detailed knowledge about uh, the, the domain. In, in um, eSmart, we mainly focus on inspection of power lines now. And uh, it's extremely important to have available the domain, uh, the, the subject matter experts uh, with, uh, with uh, deep insight and experiences connected to inspection of power lines. And secondly, we, we, we make sure that we prepare all the data from the flights, um, uh, from the drones, for example, where we collect uh, uh, images and, uh, and uh, also the type of data. And we add on synthetic data if we need that and, and um, make sure that we, we enrich the data and do all the data AI ready. And finally, we, we do the analytics uh, uh, by using the machine learning algorithms uh, we have in, uh, in our uh, architecture. Uh, we have a prominent group of investors with us in eSmart, Equinor, Eon, Kongsberg, and uh, NG Impact Partners in the US, and also Mysne, uh, Klima Investeringer here in Norway. Uh, if we move into the, the uh, way we focus when it comes to transforming workflows and use uh, AI uh, for that uh, in uh, utility power grid operations. This video uh, shows uh, the outcome from, from that operation. Uh, here you see the a drone flight and uh, you see we have collected data and, uh, and we have done the, the analytics on the data. Uh, we are able to detect uh, all the uh, components in the in structures you, you see here and also uh, defects, uh, even uh, very small defects like uh, rustic uh, cotter pins, for example, or even uh, missing cotter pins like you see here. Even if the image are very blurry, we are able to detect that type of, uh, of uh, defects. But this is not enough to, to, to have a, a product ready for, uh, for inspection of uh, power lines in, in the industry. So we, we also need to add on uh, quite a lot of new functionality, manual functionality or supporting functionality for the AI. 
And what you see here is uh, one example where we uh, connect the images to real structures and uh, in, in, in the uh, power grid. And by doing that, we, uh, we have available uh, all kind of data, technical data, for example, connected to different type of equipment or, uh, or historical data from, uh, from maintenance uh, work, for example. And, um, and uh, we, we are, uh, again, able to, to, to connect the, the, the images uh, to the real objects. And uh, the next step then is to, is to start the, uh, what you call the, the manual annotation where you use the manual functionality in the system for, for uh, annotating the, the defects and the objects in the, in the images. And uh, the third and last part of the, 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 the main process here is uh, the outcome from the algorithms. Here you see uh, defect uh, uh, as an output from the algorithms. So this is a flashed uh, insulator and you can validate or invalidate that type of findings and uh, by doing that you also improve the the, the training uh, data uh, into the the algorithms so uh, uh, what you see here is uh, is uh, the process first it's uh, all about uh, capture asset data and import data into the system and uh, then uh, do the analytics and uh, the, the green arrow here is, um, is the manual part of the process where uh, subject matter experts inspect the images and then use the manual functionality in the system for, for um, correcting uh, uh, kind of uh, wrong detections from the algorithms. And by doing that, uh, prepare for the next iteration of training. And um, so it's a continuously uh, improvement of the of the outcome uh, by having this process in place uh, <clears throat> if we uh, look at uh, the development I have been through now in the, in the market context we we started with uh, the AI part where uh, we uh, focused on AI only and uh, we had uh, uh, the, a lot of uh, projects together with uh, with uh, with uh, the R&D department, R departments in, in utilities, for example, or uh, innovation part of the utilities, where we tested the technology and uh, and uh, developed some kind of uh, examples so we can use it as I showed in the beginning here. Uh, but this is uh, the next step. Then uh, uh, was very very visible for us when we faced the reality in the U.S. Uh, when we signed the first contract a contract. Uh, with uh, with the real grid operation, uh, and uh, we had to, to to add on a lot of new functionality uh, for being able to support that uh, that uh, reality, that type of inspections. And uh, the last part of the the development here is uh, all about uh, merging the two first uh, stages, two first developments here, and uh, and uh, and develop the so-called collaborative AI where we have um, merged the, the AI with the manual functionality and optimized that for the user. So um, the CASIM here is, uh, is, uh, is uh, where we have the real danger for, for companies like eSmart. Um, uh, quite a lot of comp uh, companies, scale-up companies, uh, uh, are not uh, able to avoid that, that CASIM, but uh, it's all about uh, bridging that gap. and. Uh, understand that you in reality have two completely different customers on each side of the, the CASIM from the innovation part and into the reality so to speak. Um, so uh, what we have done then is to develop a so-called uh, uh, minimum viable business product uh, where we have uh, developed enough functionality to be competitive in that part of the market and be a market leader when it comes to that type of new uh, technology. And uh, we have uh, selected our beach and market uh, in US and, uh, and uh, Europe, where we have a list of prominent customers we, um, we uh, try to, to, to sign contracts with and, um, and uh, be a market leader by, by uh, by focusing uh, uh, on that part. Uh, what you see here is a practical example of, of um, from a real inspection in the, in the US where we have uh, inspected uh, in, a, in, a, in the, the uh, time period you see here, uh, 
uh, about uh, 56,000 um, uh, towers and uh, 5,500 uh, miles. And uh, we have also analyzed uh, 1.2 million uh, photos and uh, detected uh, about 10,000 defects. So this is uh, real data from a real operation uh, and where we have uh, used the AI-based system uh, uh, in that context. So uh, uh, for eSmart, it's a very, very good uh, development. So uh, what you see now is that we are able to reduce the maintenance, uh, the, the OPEX uh, part of the costs. We are able to reduce failure rates and we are uh, able to extend asset life with, with this type of, uh, of uh, product. So uh, uh, what we have seen uh, uh, when we have uh, tried to capture uh, this market uh, uh, by using the, the AI based product is that uh, is it not enough with pilots or proof of concepts or point solutions? Uh, you need to focus on, uh, on transforming end-to-end uh, uh, -end workflows like uh, inspection, a holistic view on inspection, for example, from the field um, uh, activity into the, the results from uh, and the uh, results from the from the system, uh, the, where you can make decisions uh, uh, based on what you the outcome from from the system, uh, and it's also. Um, uh, important to, to, to avoid the kind of big bang implementation of that type of systems. Uh, you have to do it in an agile way and step by step, but uh, not too small, uh, insignificant uh, step. It needs to be steps that count, so to speak, when it comes to the, the, the real cost reductions and, uh, and the benefits. So uh, finally, it's uh, again, it's uh, what we focus on is uh, collaborative AI, and it's, it's not about uh, displacing employees. It's all about giving your employees superpower. That, that is what we focus on. And um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Knut. So um, yeah. It was a very nice uh, image that you finished off with there, with the superpower, superman and superwoman. I really like that. Now, um, you've described, you know, the entire process. And I was just wondering, because um, you were describing that you have different clients in a way on each side of this gap. Hmm. How, uh, then the, the solution to me, it seemed to be, you know, you just have to, to show the potential clients that the end, to end workflows is the best way to go and there's there's a question from the audience that I can link to that um, are utility companies eager to start using these new types of solutions or are they a bit slow <clears throat> yeah it's uh, it's no way back to the the product maturity curve and across the Cassim uh, I, I had the uh, the slides there where you see that uh, you have um, you have kind of startup customers where where they focus on the innovation and, as such and, and uh, the technology and uh, they uh, very much like to, to to work with machine learning and test the the, the technology all that and uh, then you move um, <clears throat> move uh, up the curve and, and the, the into the early majority for example or the late majority where you, where you have more and more customers on board it's different type of customers some are uh, risk averse some are um, Kind of focus on references, for example, and uh, and but in the beginning, it's always the the, the innovative part of the market, and the early adapters um, that kind of uh, start uh, uh, use using that type of applications. So um, it is uh, when it talk about the utility market, it, it is uh, a slower market if you compare with uh, quite a lot of other markets uh, due to the fact that uh, they have um, they are physically oriented, they have uh, power plants, they have uh, transmission and distribution grids, and and uh, you can't really um, uh, compare them with uh, with a kind of typical uh, Silicon Valley uh, tech startup uh, and the way they scale their business because they have a lot of um, barriers and uh, they need to take into account and they try to change the business. Also, their regulations, for example, is, is a part of that. Yeah, 
yeah, that's another part of it, which could be an entire webinar in itself, I think. Uh, but um, also what you're describing is the difference between, you know, big physical infrastructure and maybe a more technological oriented um, uh, industry in, in a way. Um, hmm. you, you, you showed us shortly um, some of your investors and, and, and there are big investors. How important is it to have these on board when you are struggling to get from you know, um, uh, the innovative side over to markets and scaling up? Hmm. And is timing a bit of that? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if, we, if we start with uh, with uh, the definition of uh, a company like eSmart, we are an innovation-driven uh, enterprise, uh, and that means that we try to 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 have enough funding to 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 meet the hockey stick uh, curve uh, when, the, when the market take off. And uh, and uh, that is uh, that is the whole idea with that type of uh, of uh, startups. And of course, if you if you if you if you, it's a strong correlation with uh, with the investment and the funding and uh, the cross the casting curve you you saw earlier on in the, pro in the presentation. Um, if you if the market uh, kind of is slow and uh, if you don't see the the, the 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 kind of more and more mature customers, of course you 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 will run up run out of of, of cash and and uh, struggle a lot with that. So it's very much about the timing and be able to to to, to connect the the the. the uh, the funding with uh, with uh, the market maturity, so to speak. So it's it's in in reality all about uh, having um, um, investors on board uh, that understand that that uh, that situation and and uh, are willing to to follow up uh, uh, based on the the kind of the the risks and and also the delays you 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 quite often have when it comes to that uh, that timing. So how would you say you're doing today uh, at eSmart Systems? I think it's the uh, situation is uh, very, very good. We have signed with uh, <clears throat> some of the, the, the best customers in the world, the le leading customers when it comes to focus on uh, this type of new technology. And it's, uh, it's no doubt that, uh, that uh, using AI in the industry uh, will be a standard uh, when we move forward in time. So, uh, <clears throat> so the, 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 what we see now is that um, the practical approach we have here, uh, by changing the, the the whole of kind of uh, value chain when it, when it comes to to, to inspection, uh, it's something uh, that will be a standard in the industry uh, from two, three, four years from now. So uh, in that context, it's a very very good situation. That's good to hear. And Knut, we're going to see you again later on for the panel discussion. I think we should just stop here. And I know that um, for the panel discussion, we might uh, hear something about the uh, the environment that you're actually sitting in, in Halden in Norway, where I know that you are establishing on your own uh, uh, an entire ecosystem precisely for startups and, and scale-ups. So maybe we can get back to that as well later on. So thank you so much this far, Knut Johansson.